Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome back to the world of home tech with me, your host, Paul Hibbert. Welcome to the Broadlink RM Pro Plus. Why am I holding one of these? I'm holding it because it's brand new and it's been sent to me directly by Broadlink. I know it looks like a dog opened that with its mouth. That's because I'm very, very eager. Uh, Broadlink have sent me this uh, bribery pack, sorry, this care package, uh, to make sure that I stop dissing their comp, sorry, to make sure that I do some more tutorials for them. Uh, I'm joking, of course, we're all friends now, I'm sure. Uh, so the idea of this thing, if you've not seen it before, is it acts in place of an RF remote, which would control, say, a plug socket like this, uh, to control in turn, wait for it, a lamp! So this lamp is plugged into an RF plug socket, and when I press the on button on my remote, it comes on. And when I switch the off button on my remote, it goes off. Uh, the RM Pro can do that in place of this remote, and can connect to Alexa, or Google Home, or in fact Android devices, so that you can control this with your voice, or with your mobile phone. That is pretty awesome, but we've had some problems with it, and today's video is to do two things. One is to teach newbies how to get it installed from scratch, because I get asked that a lot, uh, and the second reason is to help out anyone that's currently struggling with it, because I think, I think, I can solve a few problems with it. We'll find out shortly. Anyone that's been watching me for a long time and already knows how to do all this stuff but has been having some issues, here is where you will probably find we've solved it. The problem, and I've got to say thank you first of all to uh, Krista Heisenberg and to Paul Blackman because it was their conversation on my Facebook page that led me to realise what the problem was, or led us to realise what the problem was in fact. If we go to the Play Store and we go to install Intelligent Home Centre, which is the app for controlling this, uh, then you will find you have a problem. And that's because it's not the app for controlling that. It is if you are foolish. Don't get that. Get this instead. Intelligent Home Center without the word EU at the end. Why have Broadlink done this? Nobody knows and nobody will ever know. Broadlink does strange things and this is a strange thing they have done. They have uh, created two applications that seemingly do exactly the same thing, but one of them doesn't work properly. Don't install that one. Which of course brings us on to problem number two. If you're an iPhone user, then you don't have the option for IHC, you only have IHC EU, and it is of course broken. I'm really sorry if you're an iPhone user, the only thing I can recommend is that you borrow an Android device, at least temporarily, because once you've actually set your devices up, they live in the cloud, and you won't need the Android device anymore, and you can give it back to whoever you borrowed it from. Hopefully by the time you next come to install something new, and you want to set up, say, a new plug socket, by that point, hopefully Broadlink will have solved the problem for you. Problemo numero three. Did you know I could speak Spanish? I can't. Uh, problem number three is user-defined does not and apparently will never work. Broadlink have no intention of getting user-defined to be detectable by Alexa or Google Home. It is an internal application use thing only. Do not use user-defined to train your RF devices. Use LAMP and only LAMP. And finally, problem number four. Uh, a lot of people are saying, I've set it up, everything seems to go smoothly, uh, but when I ask for the device to do something, Alexa or Google Home responds with either, uh, the device is not responding, or it says, okay, and then nothing happens. And that's annoying because it seems to have worked, but then doesn't actually work. If that is the case, the problem is some weird bug, uh, and the solution is very simple, but very painful. Unfortunately, the solution is to start from scratch, so you need to do these things in order. The first thing you need to do is to remove the Alexa skill or the Google Home skill from the app so that your skill is no longer in place. You then need to uh, remove the device from IHC, so if it's the Broadlink RM Pro or whatever Broadlink device it is, remove it from IHC. It will sadly remove all of the devices you have created. All of your appliances will be gone. Uh, you oh. then need to factory reset the device or at least put it back into pairing mode. So you need to hold a pin in the reset switch for about four seconds until the light starts flashing blue again and then just start over. Uh, you then rediscover the device, reset up all your appliances, and then put the Alexa skill back in place, or the Google Home skill back in place, and everything should be discovered, and finally, everything should work. Uh, if you need help doing that, keep watching this video, because now we're on to the parts where I show you how to set up stuff from scratch. Enjoy! 
So I'm going to install Intelligent Home Center, I'm going to press accept, and then the video is going to start fast forwarding because it'd be really boring to watch me install it. Uh okay. It was finally installed. There was a chipmunk there, right? Okay, good. Uh, I'm now going to press uh, open and we should get Intelligent Home Center come up. Uh, I get a warning telling him it needs some permissions. Give it all of the permissions. All of the permissions. If you don't give it all of the permissions, you will regret it. I now need to create an account if I don't already have one. I do have one, so I'm going to log in. If you don't have one, create one. And the first thing that's come up is it's telling me there is a new version already. This app is a little bit sneaky, because what it does is it installs like a base version from the Play Store and then updates itself internally so that you can't mess around and get whatever version you want. I think that's basically what it's doing. So I'm going to say, please confirm, yes, okay. So IHC is now telling me that for security purposes, your phone is not allowed to install unknown apps. And obviously we need to. So we're going to go to settings and then install unknown apps by saying allow from the source and then we can go back uh, and then install and it's going to install the latest version of IHC which it is doing now Hooray! It is done! Uh, so I'm going to press done and now we have the latest version of IHC installed uh, and again it's telling me it needs permission so I'm going to say got it so now we have a nice empty IHC screen and all we've got to do is add a device. So obviously I need to plug this thing in first of all. The nice thing is it will connect to any 5 volt power supply, uh, so you could connect it to a PC and it will power quite happily. So when you first plug it in you'll get some lights that will appear on the front and there should be a blue blinking light in a second. And yes, it's blinking blue. I don't know if you can see that on camera, it's blinking quite rapidly and it's saying, I don't know anything. Uh, basically, if it doesn't blink blue, there is a reset switch in the back. Just put a pin in the reset switch for five seconds and it will start blinking blue. Uh, basically, it puts it into pairing mode. If anything really goes wrong with this thing, hold the pin in for about 20 seconds and it will just factory reset it. Kill it all together and we can start again. So I'm now gonna press add device. And now it gives you a QR scanner, which I should be able to scan a QR code for, but I know for a fact it doesn't work. So I'm going to press add device by category, and I'm going to select uh, universal remotes, because that's what this is. Uh, I now have the option of an RM Pro or an RM Pro Plus or an RM Mini 3. If you're installing an RM Mini 3, this is exactly the same process. Um, I'm going to install the RM Pro Plus because that's what I have in my hand. Uh, and you can see it's saying a power on the device, which I already have with the USB cable uh, and it's asking me if the LED light is doing what it's supposed to do, which it is. Press next. Uh, now you need to connect to your Wi-Fi, so I'm going to put in my Wi-Fi password. Um, so that is that paired. That was easy. So I'm going to call this Living Room RM Pro. That has now saved successfully. And it's asking me what kind of appliance do I want to control? Well, I want to control my plug socket. Uh, but this plug socket is not listed here, if you'll notice. I only have the option for lamp, wall switch, RF. And I can tell you now, all of these things have their uses, uh, but the one that we need for controlling RF devices for simple on-off commands like this uses, we can just use a lamp. So I've now got the option to name it and we need to call it whatever we intend to control because this is what Alexa will be listening out for or Google Home will be listening out for. So we need to name it accordingly. So I'm going to call it uh, bedside lamp because I intend to plug a lamp into it and this thing will just switch the lamp on and off. So bedside lamp, okay. Please make sure the Wi-Fi universal remote is in the RIR range of appliance and keep them in line of sight. Okay, I'm ready. So I'm going to press the I'm ready button and it's asking me, is it an infrared remote or is it an RF remote? This is an RF remote. You should hopefully know that because you bought it. So I'm going to click the RF remote uh, and it's now asking me to please keep your remote close to Wi-Fi universal remote. It's talking about this thing. I don't know why they don't just use the words RM Pro. Um, and press and hold any button on the remote. So I'm going to press and hold button 3 because I happen to know it's button 3 that controls this plug socket. Matching successful. Good news. It's now telling me to press the on button. Learn success, good news. Okay, on. And it's fired the on frequency. It's already on, so I don't know if it worked. I'm gonna assume it did. I'm gonna press yes, it worked. 
It now wants me to press the dimmer button. There is no dimmer button, this thing only has on and off. So I'm going to press skip. Uh, skip. It now wants brighter, that doesn't exist either. Skip, skip. And now it wants off, so I'm going to press the off button. And this is where you find you have to keep pressing the off button a whole bunch of billion times and it fails and you have to press retry and then keep trying again and eventually it will go through. Hooray! Now if I press off, it sends the frequency and the light would have gone off if there was a light plugged in and it wasn't already switched off. So I'm going to say yes, that worked. And here it says, uh, you haven't learned a bunch of buttons. Um, do you want us to keep annoying you for the rest of your life that you haven't learned those buttons? Or would you like no prompt? I would like no prompt. Uh, I'm going to put these down. I don't need them for now. Uh, and basically, I'm going to pick them back up again. <laughs> if I press on, it comes on. If I press off, it goes off. So the RM Pro is now controlling that plug socket. Awesome. I want Alexa to do the same thing. Obviously, that's the whole point of this video. All we need to do is go to the Alexa app and go to, when it eventually loads, the button over here and go to skills and search for the Broadlink skill. Again, Broadlink in their infinite wisdom have created more than one skill. Why? Who knows? They all do the same thing. Only one of them doesn't work properly. Um, so I'm going to search for Broadlink uh, and we've got Broadlink Smart Home is the first one that comes up. That's the one we want. We need to enable that skill. And all it's going to do is it's going to link the Alexa account to the Broadlink account in the cloud on the internet. Uh, so it's asking us to confirm our user details. First of all, we've got to say, yes, we've done all those things. Press next. Uh, and it's already got my username and password in from last time I did it. You'll need to put your username and password in for your Broadlink account, the thing that you created in the IHC app. Whatever email address and password you used then, use it now. Pressing sign in. It has successfully linked the account. And if I press the cross to go back and press discover devices, she is now wow. going to find, or I will be very angry, uh, she is now going to find a uh, device called bedside lamp because that's what we named it in the IHC app. It's discovering devices now. So um, I'm going to speed the video up again. That has found 13 devices. Did you like that? Is this old already? This is already old, isn't it? I should probably stop doing the stupid chipmunk thing. Bedside lamp, it is there. And if I open it in Alexa's app, I can press on. Wait a minute. Off. There you go. Doesn't take long. It takes a little longer than you might want, but it doesn't really matter. If you're using your voice, you're probably not going to notice that. So, I suppose the big test is now, if I use the words Alexa... Alexa, switch bedside lamp off. Bedside lamp doesn't support that. What? Are you f***ing joking? So it seems every time I make a tutorial, I find a new eccentricity with this stupid little cow. Uh, basically, she doesn't like the word bedside lamp for no reason. Uh, this is not Broadlink's fault. This is, in fact, Amazon's fault. I'm going to press edit here, and you'll find if I name this bedside light, it'll work properly. How ridiculous. Uh, I can't press back here as well. You have to click out of this box for it to actually set that before you press back. Another stupid little eccentricity. Alexa, switch bedside light on. Click. Okay. Amazing. So, because I like to give you two for the price of one, because I'm just kind like that, uh, I'm going to show you how to do exactly the same thing with, um... Uh, huh. Uh, so if you're a Google Home fan, you don't like the whole Alexa thing, this works just as well, if not better. Uh, depends on your preference. I'm not going to give you my preference because I will lose half my audience. Um, so if I now go into uh, the Google Home app, and all you've got to do is enable the skill in the Google Home app in exactly the same way, and Google Home will detect a bedroom lamp. So I'm going to go to uh, Home Control. I'm going to press the plus button. I'm going to scroll down to Broadlink, Smart Home. Uh, I'm going to confirm all of that stuff I confirmed in the Amazon app. And again, my username and password's in here already. You'll need to put yours in. And again, it's the same username and password from your IHC app. Sign in. And now it is linked. It has found a bedside lamp. So I can now say, OK, Google, 
Switch bedside lamp on. Woohoo! Okay, turn <laughs> it's as simple as that. If you've enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you want to see some more of this guy, hit that subscribe button. And all my funding pretty much comes from you guys. So if you want to help support my channel, there are links in the description to do that too. I'll see you next time. More energy! More energy, Paul! So I'm gonna prog... Prog? I'm gonna prog it in. <laughs> I don't know where I am! Please teach me where I am! I don't know why I'm doing that voice. Boys and girls, welcome to the Sent me a... Uh, oh, what did they send me? What did they send me? <laughs>